pretty much 90 degrees so I'm happy with that alignment so now the next thing will be to go ahead and insert this hin these hinges uh, make sure that this they test fit correctly so you have your accessories for flaps uh, bag baggy with all the stuff that we'll need for this so you can see there's really no way to insert this guy into here without yeah so what this tells me is that I'm gonna have to put the epoxy in there uh, an epoxy that takes a while to cure maybe like maybe 20 minutes minimum because I'm gonna have to fidget and fiddle around with this to get it back to this perfect alignment so I'll get that done and then I'll show you what that looks like I took off the tape and as you can see I've inserted the hinges and this is just a dry fit just to figure out how things are gonna fit and you can see that my marks align and it looks like we really want uh, the center of the hinge points so the bulbous part to actually line up as close as possible to the middle of the hinge so that way the flap moves freely so I've checked that I'm happy with it so now comes the tough part um, of gluing this and what I think I'm gonna do is pull out the hinges drop a 20 minute epoxy in there uh, pull this out stick it back in and then just put some uh, maybe some CA on the edges to to keep that the way I want maybe not maybe I'll just tape it back up and then let it sit until uh, this is cured. so uh, for this job I'm gonna be using uh, EP 420 NS uh, that's this epoxy uh, and the reason for that is a 20 minute cure time and I'll need that because of alignment so what I've done is I've already put epoxy in the holes here you can see some of it oozing out there um, and I've added as well epoxy on the wing side so you can see that there and what I'm gonna do now is just work these in until everything lines up and then we're gonna tape it uh, in place. So I'm just gonna add a little more epoxy in some of these spots, a little light. Okay, and here we gotta work fast. So this one's a bit challenging, but we we'll just work our way in slowly. Okay, so the hinges are kind of in place, but now we gotta align everything. I need that alignment to be just perfect. So it feels like I gotta I gotta pull the hinges out a little bit. This guy needs to come up a little bit. This is, uh, I think, the, so far the, the most painful part of, of the build is the flaps. Because if you don't align things correctly, it's not going to look good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. My marks line up, so I'm just going to inspect the top side see if I'm happy with the with the alignment here let's see uh, it looks decent there we go okay so I'm happy with that so I'm just gonna tape and seal this in place okay and then go back on the back side and just make sure that I am still happy with that. Let's see. Uh, not quite. So basically I'm just gonna work this back and forth until I get a fit that I'm happy with. And this is one of the reasons that you need 20 minute epoxy or something slow um, because you're gonna be fidgeting with the alignment until uh, you're happy with it. So while the flap 
uh, hinges are curing, uh, I think I can do some of the other parts. Simple parts. So, in your flap accessories kit, again, you will find uh, four of these rods, two for each wing, and these are the points at which the fuselage will clamp onto the wing, and those are easily installed. They just go into these threaded inserts right here and right here. So, easy to do. I'm just going to put some Loctite. The manual also calls for this. Um, I'm going to use my blue Loctite for that purpose. It's going to be liberal with that guy. As well as this one. And then we're going to insert these and screw them into the wing. Get some Loctite into the wing as well. And then we just screw these guys in place. These guys are installed. Uh, the flap hinges are almost cured, so what I'm installing now is the um, <clears throat> the point on the flap where the linkage will connect. And as you can see, the shape of this is such that it has a slight divot on the top, um, and that's just so that it fits into that hole just perfectly. So I've glued that uh, just now on both sides, and we're going to let that cure. And then uh, once that's done, we're going to install the flap servos. <clears throat> we're working on the flap right now. And so here's a modification that I made so that I could fit a full size server. You can see that I opened up this uh, uh, mounting point for the servo. Uh, and basically, I dropped this height lower. Uh, and as you can see, I have put these rubber feet on the top uh, ears of the servo, not the bottom ones. And the idea is now, when this is screwed, that tilts the angle from being sort of like that to being much lower. And that allows the hatch to close pretty flush. What this means though is because uh, the top side is going to be further away from the mounting block. I need long screws and what I have found work well are these RTL fasteners two by number two by nine sixteen. So the number two is what's important because that's what's gonna fit through um, that brass insert right there. So we're gonna use that and as you can see once it's fully inserted it's gonna be uh, it's gonna have good bite on the back of the of the server so that should work out really well for us. So with that done, the next thing was obviously to go into our flap accessories pack and in there you'll find um, everything that you need. So you'll find like your uh, ball joints, ball links and your server extensions. And again, I found that the threads on my server extensions were just not, didn't have enough bite. So I instead used an M3 rod because um, these are also M3 and again because you can see the difference here this guy has threads all through what comes with it has threads only on the ends and I think there's a structural component there so what I'm gonna do is create my my um, my linkage rod as you can see in there and then once that's done I'm gonna put a carbon fiber uh, tube on top of it just to give it more strength so it doesn't bend and whatnot but in terms of figuring out um, control throws. So basically, I mounted, um, um, I cut my M3 rod to the exact length that, of those that come with uh, um, the kit, and then I insert it in there. And you can see right now. Let's see if I can zoom in. I have no screw um, securing my servo arm, and the reason is I'm trying to figure out where to install this. So basically, I hook it in loosely, and then. Um, uh, I have my servo control here and I basically go both ways so full down and I was really looking for full down to be a situation where the geometry works out that um, the arm 
uh, is not actually using servo torque. So for example, you can see in this case, it's, it's not quite that, but it's close. But if this was just straight relative to the rod, then whatever forces are pulling on this flap are actually just pulling on the arm and the servo is not using any torque. So that would be the best case scenario. Um, so I was looking for that. I did my best to get to that geometry so that when you have full flap down, then my full my arm is just completely in the same direction um, as the linkage here. And then when the, when the servo is all the way up, as far as it can go on my uh, on my servo controller here, as far as I can go in, that's all the way, flaps all the way up. And so now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna lock this position in place and we will call that uh, done. And we just have to repeat this on the other side. And just for those who are interested, the servo arm I'm using is this special arm I just got from Amazon, 25T and in terms of length from you know the spline to the, the outermost hole is let's call it it's about 19 millimeters and then the entire length is about 31 millimeters and then from the center here to the end because this is what's going to touch the bottom skin of of the of the top surface of the wing that's about 22, 23 millimeters. So that's the size of um, linkage you're gonna, not linkage, arm you're gonna need for the servo. Anything, this barely fits in there. So you actually, I actually send it off just a little bit off of the end here to bring this in. And I'm using the innermost hole right here. So the hole that I want for this flap is really, uh, 15 millimeters from the center so if you get a servo arm that's like 16 millimeters because you don't need the bottom hole you just need that's that's as much as you need um, that works great and that gave you all the throw that you, I just showed here's the final product so that's the carbon fiber uh, tube and so this is now fairly strong uh, and even if the uh, threaded rod bends inside it can only bend so much because a lot of the strength is provided by the carbon fiber so we're gonna install this in here test it one more time and then we are gonna be done um, with the flap installation obviously next thing is just putting the cover on top and that's easy because it's already pre-drilled for you you just cover it and put the screws in it Product. Uh, you can see I put a washer and then screw into the horn and then washer and then lock nut, nylon lock, lock nut, and then the back end. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, so one more thing I forgot to show is because I didn't want to drop um, the bottom here too low, I just you know have to sand uh, a little bit off of the cover. But other than that, it's perfect fit, and you can see that right here. Here's the final product. You can see everything moves very smoothly. Um, and even though we had a full-size servo in there, that cover fits perfectly well. So you can see the flap there, full up, full down. Now, now there's still a problem in the sense that when I uh, put the flap on the plane, you can't get this full extension without trimming the flap. So I'm probably gonna trim the flap. Uh, it rubs up against the fuselage uh, right on this section here. So I'm gonna have to cut or trim a little bit of this off if I wanna get this full flap deflection. Here's what I'm talking about. I have the wing uh, that I've just finished installing the flap salvo on. And you know, it's fairly tight. And there's still a big gap here. Anyway, I've pushed it in as far as I can. And what happens when I activate the flap, you see it goes about there. And it can't move because it's rubbing right here. Right. And that's, you see that? So that needs to be trimmed if I want to have any chance of getting full. And you can see as I push it further down, you can see it's separating right here. Um, I was wondering if I was able to move this, but you know, maybe moving the whole flap a little bit in that direction would have helped, but 
as you can see it's pretty tight up against the aileron so there's not really anywhere for it to move um, in that direction so I'm just gonna go and trim that and see if I can get that so to work. I have trimmed um, some of the flap off I'd say maybe two to three millimeters off um, and you can see uh, what happens here is that there's a bit of a gap at the top but now because of the angle of the wing now when the flap goes down you can see that there's a lot less rubbing and I get a lot more throw um, I'm not sure that everyone would want to do this because the manual might not need us to have our flap go down this far but for me the reason I did this is I dislike any kind of binding on my control surfaces um, I just don't want to have any what I trimmed off and you can see I still got a little bit of sanding to do um, and it's not too bad because what I'm basically going to do is sand this off level and then I'm going to, you know, cut a piece of balsa that is shaped exactly to the profile of the flap and glue it in place. See the beginnings? I've already filled uh, that with a balsa plug and what I'm going to do is just get foam filler in here, fill that and then sand it smooth. So, here's what the end result looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I've trimmed the flap, sealed it, looks pretty good. Um, and the stuff that I use for that, in case you're wondering, is this filler, Easy Sand. Um, it's a little bit easier to sand compared to something like Bondo um, or even like Balsa Filler. This stuff sands really well and it takes like on a summer day like 5-10 minutes to, to dry. And so you can see that that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that and I'm done with that flap. Uh, it extends correctly, obviously trimmed it. Um, and yeah.